and welcome to Mike Nerichlo Online, sharing my love for people, wine, food, and all things made passionately. All right, today's episode, we're talking Meritage Blends. Now, to refresh your memory, what's a Meritage Blend? Meritage Blend is a Bordeaux blend, but a Bordeaux blend made anywhere else than Bordeaux. Like, if you're in Bordeaux, your grapes can be called a Bordeaux blend because they're made there from Bordeaux. Meritage is what you call it elsewhere. Now, a Bordeaux blend or a Meritage blend typically is a blend of some combination of five major grape varieties. Now, these five major varieties consist of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdot, and Malbec. So these wines are all gonna have some sort of combination within those five. Doesn't have to be all five, can be three, can be whatever, um, to be classified as a Meritage blend. Also, there's a sixth variety that can be in there classically in Bordeaux, but you don't see it very often at all. They haven't grown in Bordeaux for many number of years. It's Carmenere. Now, Carmenere is a variety that, like Malbec in Argentina, Carmenere is doing exceptionally well in Chile. Um, I'm going to segue from this into a few other episodes down the road on Carmenere because you're going to find some really interesting valued Carmenere coming out of Chile. Like I said, originally grown in Bordeaux, got wiped out in Bordeaux because of uh, aphid. Phylloxera, whole another story. Uh, I've probably covered it in a past episode, but anyway, a pest that kind of wiped out the European wine world 100 and something years ago, 150 years ago or so, but it's recovered since. So anyway, Meritage Blends. I've got three here from beautiful British Columbia today that I'm excited to taste through. So let's get right into it. The first one from Mount Boucherie Estate Winery. Uh, and if you remember, or if you want to learn more about Mount Boucherie, Nermal Gita, the, the proprietor or one of the family runners of Mount Boucherie, was here several episodes ago. Great interview with him. Uh, they're located very close to Mission Hill, Quails Gate, all the big guys right in the same area. This is their 2007 Summit or Summit Reserve. Now, when it comes to a Meritage Blend, they'll also use fun words like Summit or Legacy or things like that, um, kind of big, highfalutin words, um, because they're using kind of big, sought-after grape varieties. Whew, talking a lot. I talk a lot on the show, don't I? A lot of information for you coming out of my mouth. I don't know how I, my, my brain connects to my mouth so quick. The wine tends to help to show me out. Anyway, the Summit from Mount Boucher State Winery. It's about 25 bucks. Super cool people running Mount Boucher Estate. They're one of the oldest uh, family-run operations in British Columbia or in our Okanagan. They've only been making wine since about 2001, but they've been growing grapes um, since the 60s, I believe. Um, again, we covered that in the previous episode or a few episodes ago when they were here. Um, and they own a lot of land as well in the Okanagan, around 300 acres. They're growing grapes for for almost everybody. A lot of people source fruit from them because they're growing good quality fruit. Let's get into their wine. Like I said, about 25 bucks for this one. On the nose, Bordeaux blend. Merlot, Cab Sav, and Cab Franc is the blend on this one. Now typically on a label, the, how do you want to put, the volume of every variety used is kind of in the order of it came. So this has the most of Merlot, then Cab Sav, then Cab Franc. Wow, okay. This wine is peppery, like peppery. Peppery, 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 like freshly cracked. If you want to, the grocery store and go to the box section and buy like blended peppercorns um like it's a blended mix of different peppercorns and you put them in your pepper mill and grind them into your glass this is what you're smelling it's like a blend of different peppercorns super peppery super peppery almost like red bell pepper as well kind of leathery kind of earthy yeah in your nose very savory nose it's a fly there very savory nose mm. And the same goes for the palate. The nose reflects the palate very much. Very peppery, got a lot of that leather. Tons, tons of black currants on this wine. Um, kind of a nice soft rounded black cherry as well, but tons of black currants. A lot of black fruit. This is a big wine, this is a food wine. You'd have this with your like peppercorn steak or something like that. This is gonna hold up, it's gonna work really well. You could marinate that steak in this stuff and it's gonna Give it some pepperiness. Um, big, meaty steak wine, this one. Big wine, uh, big body wine, full body wine. So 07 means it's about four years old, or just about four years old. Um, this wine will last a long time. It's got a good tannic structure to it, like a lot of tannin. The tannins, 
for my liking, are a little bit bitter, but that's going to soften with time. They're going to get a little bit better. It's kind of got that dark chocolate earthiness to it, too. Nice wine. 25 bucks on my wine rating system. I'm going to put this... It's a good wine. Let's put it that way. It's a good plus. Let's go good, good plus on my wine rating system. I like it. All right, the next one we're going into. McWater's Collection Meritage. Now, this is one I've been interested in tasting for a little while. Um, in... British Columbia here in the Okanagan. This is the 2007. There's a winery called Sumac Ridge, a state winery. Sumac Ridge was started by Harry McWaters. Now, Harry McWaters is an individual who's been part of the BC wine world since the beginning. Um, without him and several other people, it, BC wine may not be what it is today as far as being put on the map. Um, they've done a really good job promoting the BC wine world and really just kind of working their butt off to make it happen. Uh, so that's Harry McWaters. Owner of Sumac Ridge Estate Wineries, one of the original wineries of the Okanagan. What he's done, this is his collection. He's gone around uh, to some of his favorite vineyards in the area, like some favorite vineyards um, on their estate. And he's picked, I guess the story is, the premium fruit uh, from these vineyards and made his own uh, blends, blend or blends. He's got a couple different wines coming out. Uh, this is their first release of their Meritage. They're calling this one their Meritage. Uh, 60% Merlot, 35% Cab Sav, and 5% Cab Franc. So very similar blend to the first one. Same vintage. Let's see how they compare. On the nose. Hmm. Different nose than the first one. A lot more earthy aromas on the nose of this one. Yeah, a lot more earthy aromas on the nose. Kind of like a, a sandy minerality, like almost sandy, dirty, gravelly. Aroma, somewhat floral. Definitely, definitely, definitely a softer nose than the first one. This has more of your red fruit. The other one's like that black peppered wine. This is more of your red fruits. You get kind of your big black and red cherry, more red cherries. Slight maybe maraschino cherry, red currants. Not quite so vegetal, slightly more floral, whereas the other one's a little more vegetal. Yeah, rounded aromas. Um, almost like a milk chocolate aroma as well. Twenty-five bucks for this wine as well. Soft wine, soft wine drinks much softer. Yeah, definitely a softer wine. The nose is interesting. The nose almost tells a story in this wine about where it came from. The palate, I'm not as excited about as the nose. Kind of jumps over my mid palate. You get the nice kind of sweeter, like more sharp flavors up front. In the finish, you get those nice kind of soft. Milk chocolate meets round, soft red cherries. Um, very nice wine, very approachable wine. Hints of kind of coffee notes in there too. I like it. Again, same kind of category as the first one. I like it. I'm going to put it in the same place. 25 bucks, good plus. What's fun about these wines, I've rated them exactly the same. They're both good plus, they're both $25, but they're both polar opposite wines. So the quality is there in both of them. They're both good quality. They're not amazing and they're not bad. They're both good, approachable, average, good quality. And but two opposite wines. So you get your nice, soft kind of evening. You'd, you'd have this with pork or with a lightly marinated steak or something like that. And your summit, you would have your big peppercorn or your New York steak, something like that. Something that's got a bit more oomph to it. Two different wines. Okay, third one I'm going to get into. Riverstone Estate Winery. This is the 2009. So Ted, um, if you want to learn more about Riverstone, several episodes ago, probably 10 or 20 episodes ago now, uh, I spent some time up at Riverstone and Oliver hung out with Ted right around the same time as the Soyuz Celebrity Wine Festival. Super cool setup, super cool winery. I love Ted's passion. He's so excited about what he's doing. Small operation, Ted and Lorraine came. Uh, tasted through their wines on the show as well. He's very impressed for wines that are straight out of the gate at a winery. Super excited for the potential down road of Riverstone Winery. Again, the reason I love the wine world, yes, I love wine, but I love experiencing the people in the wine world. And again, all three of these wineries, actually, all the people are awesome. Um, Riverstone really enjoyed my visit, and I will go back there, and I'll recommend for people to go back there because it's a nice place to stop. The people greet you with a handshake. You get to meet the owners. You go to their tasting room. It's on their property right by their house. Um, Great stop. So I'm excited to taste this. This is his Cornerstone. It's a 2009. Sorry, Ted, I know it's not the same vintage as the first two. Um, so the other two are drinking a little bit more aged. 
but I'm very excited to try this one out. So this one is a very similar blend again. It's 49% Merlot, 29% Cab Sav, 18% Malbec, and 4% Cab Franc. So they got Malbec in this one, which is different than 18. Look at the label there. I think he's asking about $28 for this wine. Let's get a rinse in here and see how it plays out. Now, in my opinion, I'm curious because when I tasted his Cab Franc, there's only 4% of Cab Franc in here, and I really liked his Cab Franc, and he sold out of his Cab Franc, his 09 Cab Franc, which is a very nice wine. If he's got any extra near the winery, see if you can get your hands on some. Anyway, Cab Franc is a good wine. Very curious to try his Meritage or his Cornerstone, which is a Bordeaux blend. <laughs> okay. Wow. Interesting. Give me a second with this one. Younger wine, and I can smell that it's a younger wine, but I appreciate that. Okay, this one falls right in between the two of these. This has the pepperiness of the first one, but the rounded red fruits of the second one. More red berry fruits going on in here. You kind of get those, you get the cherries and the currants, but you get kind of a almost raspberry strawberry or something in here. Could be from the Malbec. Malbec tends to be a very juicy berry fruit flavored wine. Hmm. Yeah, the pepperiness is there. Pepperiness is there. You get a lot of berry flavors in this one, as opposed to the, the cherry flavors. There's a bit of those cherry flavors. I'm going to say this is much more red cherry flavors, um, but you get a lot more berry flavors. I'm going to venture to say kind of blackberry meets raspberry. Um, kind of those tart, acidic berries. Yeah, maybe a bit of blueberry in there. Also, a lot of current, like kind of those sharp red currants. Now, I've got that tartness to it. Nice, flavorful tannin on this wine. I like this wine. It's a wine that's built for some time. Um, lie it down. It drinks really good. It's a really good wine. Uh, falls in the same category as the other two, to be honest. It's funny. You can put this right in between the two, and then you have a smooth transition between all three as far as flavor profiles. They all drink very nice. Um, yeah, don't know what else to say about that one. Like I said, this has got more of those berry flavors. Nice tannin, kind of meets more of those dark chocolate flavors, like a peppered dark chocolate. Yeah, earthy peppered dark chocolate on the finish. Um, really nice long finish on this one. I like that. Um, but you know what, Ted? That's awesome. You're... Mount Boucher has been making wine forever. Harry McWater has been making wine forever. You guys are just out of the gate. I'm putting you guys all on the same category. You're all around the same price point. So good plus for this one as well. That's what I like about all three of these wines. None of them are exceptional and blowing my mind. None of them are bad. They're all perfect middle ground wines. Very approachable. Everybody's going to enjoy these wines. Um, fun wines. Good wines to drink. All three would lie down your cellar and get a little better with time. Um... What else can I say? Buy yourself some meat, buy yourself some BC Meritage like this, and have yourself a great evening. So everybody out there, thank you so much for watching today. Really appreciate everybody out there. Remember, continue to leave comments, like I've said in past episodes. There's no such thing as a stupid question if you don't know the answer. Wine! Depretentious size. We'll see all of you on the next episode.